Habari Ghani. What's the news? Kwanzaa. I am Sheena Sewell, Assistant Regional Manager of the African American Research Library and Cultural Center, part of Broward County Libraries. And I welcome you to our 2022 Kwanzaa celebration that begins December 26th and ends January 1st. We will have several experiences for you with workshops that teach about Kwanzaa and the Naguza Saba, the seven principles. We'll have performances to engage and inspire the entire family and an Ojama cultural rich marketplace with local vendors. 2022 Kwanzaa celebration concludes the bicennial celebration of 20 years of black excellence, where we activated and reconfirmed the mission and vision of the African American Research Library and Cultural Center. We look forward to your continued support of this great institution. Thank you. Jambo, my name is Nzinga, and I'm excited to introduce you to our 2022 Kwanzaa celebration at the African American Research Library and Cultural Center. It's our 20th year, and we're going to have a hybrid program, it's going to be online as well as in person. This year's theme is Heal, Plant, and Grow. Over the next seven days, we'll have a variety of workshops, classes, as well as discussions that are gonna allow you to heal, to explore your creativity, as well as your culture. We look forward to seeing you over the next seven days and can't wait to see the amazing results. Thank you. It's the first day of Kwanzaa, Umoja, which means unity in Swahili. During this day, we're focusing on unity between our community, family, nation, and race. What does Umoja mean to you? Created in 1966 by Milano Ron Karenga. Kwanzaa is an African-American and Pan-African holiday that celebrates history, values, family, community, and culture. The ideas and concepts of Kwanzaa are expressed in the Swahili language, one of the most widely spoken languages in Africa. The seven principles form its core, which were drawn from communitarian values found throughout the African continent. The principles are as follows. Umoja, unity. Kujitagalia, self-determination. Ujima, collective work and responsibility. Ujama, cooperative economics. Nia, purpose. Kuumba, creativity, and Amani, faith. Kwanzaa gets its name from the Swahili phrase, Matunda Ya Kwanzaa, and is rooted in first fruits celebrations, which are found in cultures throughout Africa, both in ancient and modern times. Kwanzaa was created in 1966 by Milano Karenga to affirm certain things, one, reaffirm and restore African heritage and culture. Two, to introduce and reinforce the seven principles, the Nguza Saba. Three, to serve as a nationally celebrated communal and non-heroic holiday. Four, as an act of cultural self-determination. Kwanzaa is a time for learning, family, 
and celebration. During the week of Kwanzaa, families and communities come together to share a feast, to honor their ancestors, affirm the bonds between them, and celebrate African and African-American culture. Each day they light a candle to highlight the principle that the day represents and to breathe meaning into the principle with various activities, such as reciting sayings or writings of great black thinkers and writers, reciting original poetry, African drumming, and sharing a meal of African diaspora inspired foods. The tables are decorated with essential symbols of Kwanzaa, such as the kanara, the candle holder, the mkeka, the mat, the muhindi, the corn, which represents the children, the mazawo, the fruits to represent the harvest, and the zawadi, the gifts. One might also see the Pan-African flag. The colors are red, black, and green. Red represents the struggle, black the people, and green the future. You'll find these colors represented throughout the space in clothing worn by the participants. These colors were first instilled by Marcus Garvey to represent all people of the African diaspora. Jambo, my brothers and sisters. My name is Dr. Kim D. Harris, and I am the artistic director of The Creative You. And I am here today to share my word sound about Kwanzaa, about Sankofa, about the Nguza Saba. This is the Sankofa era, and we must remember and embrace the sacredness and significance of our, yours, mine, yes, our ancestors. In the spirit of Nguza Saba, we celebrate Kwanzaa. together to share, to celebrate who we are as a powerful, powerful people in the movement of life. Kwanzaa is the ritual for our Sankofa. And the season is the Nguza Saba to celebrate and recognize the ways of our ancestors. Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa, all reaffirming holiday seven principles celebrated seven ways. Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa, all reaffirming holiday. Ooh, Moja, 
Kuji cakalia ujima ujama niya ko umba imani enguza saba enguza saba enguza saba Culture, colors, music, language, spirit, and love. Colors, culture, music, faces, spirit, language, and love. Colors, culture, faces, spirit, music, language, and love. The colors of Kwanzaa are yellow, red, black, and green, all connected in unity the culture of kwanzaa is africa created in the 60s by dr malana karenga the faces of kwanzaa is our families that's you and me and us and we the spirit of kwanzaa is the nguza saba that seven days celebrated in seven cultural ways. The language of Kwanzaa is Kiswahili. What the news is Habaragani. The music of Kwanzaa is our heartbeats. <laughs> that creates a rhythm whenever we meet. The love of Kwanzaa is for yours, mine, yes, our ancestors who've paved the way for us today. Remember, Sankofa says we must remember the Nguza Saba, our harvest, celebration of who we are as a powerful people. Sankofa says we must Remember, we must remember Sankofa. Oh, Sankofa, high over the heavens you soar. My soul will soon to follow you back to yesterday's moon. It remembers me back to yesterday's sun. It will rekindle me, rekindle its spirit into tomorrow. And high over the winds, Sankofa flies again and again. Sankofa flies. Again and again, Sankofa flies again.
My name is Nzinga and I'm excited to be able to show you how we can set up our Kwanzaa table. You'll need a couple components and we're going to go over the meanings and significance of each one. Let's get ready to set up our Kwanzaa table. Our Kwanzaa table is where we put our point of focus during the next seven days. There's different items that are on the table that have different meanings and we're going to go over those things in a bit. Here's the basics. You're going to need a candle holder, fruit in a bowl, your corn, your mat, definitely some gifts, African fabric, and some books that teach you about Kwanzaa. I can't wait to see your Kwanzaa tables over the next seven days. Decorating for Kwanzaa. Traditional Kwanzaa celebrations center on a table set for the occasion. To create your own table set, you're going to need a African cloth or colors from the bandera, red, black, or green, to cover your table. Kwanzaa has seven basic symbols and two supplemental ones. Each represents values and concepts reflective of African culture and contributive to community building and reinforcement. 
The first one we're going to place down is the Mkeka, the mat. This is symbolic of our tradition and history and therefore the foundation on which we build. Then we're going to add our Kanara. This is symbolic of our roots, our parent people, continental Africans. We're going to also add our Mushima Saba, the seven candles. They're symbolic of the Nguza Saba, the seven principles, the matrix and the minimum set of values which African people are urged to live by in order to rescue and reconstruct their lives in their own image and according to their own needs. For each day, one candle is lit to represent every principle. Then we're gonna add the Kukuru Cha Umoja, the unity cup. This is symbolic of the foundational principle and practice of unity, which makes all things possible. We pour libations for this cup and often share a drink from it. Another key symbol is the Muhindi, the corn. This is symbolic of our children and our future, which they embody. You'll have one ear of corn for every child in the family. If you don't have children, you'll still include one ear for the idea of social parenthood. We also have the mazao, the harvest. This is symbolic of the African harvest celebrations and the rewards of a productive and collective labor. Then we have the zawadi, the gifts. These are symbolic of the labor and love of parents and the commitments made and kept by the children. Oftentimes we use books and here are a list of some of our favorite books to help you celebrate this Kwanzaa as well as make some gifts from scratch. You can add some additional symbols that reflect your African heritage on your table and to personalize it, such as an ankh, fertility dolls, and drums. You can also accent your table with more fabric to add an extra touch. And now you're ready to go. Hi, Havaragani, everyone. We're so excited to have you join us today um, for our first day of our seven-day Kwanzaa celebration brought to you by the African-American Research Library and sponsored by the Friends of the African-American Research Library as well as Broward County Libraries and Bank of America. And so I wanna thank our sponsors up front. Now we're getting ready to have a very live conversation with Matthew A. Pygett. And I wanted to make sure I gave you a sense of who he is because he's an amazing speaker. He's super passionate about Kwanzaa and I felt he'd be perfect person for us to kick off this first day. Recognized as one of the most, well, one of the 50 most powerful black leaders of South Florida, the Miami Times New Generation of Dreamers, Legacy Magazine's 40 Under 40, BME Community Genius, and Harvard Business School's Young American Leaders, Matthew A. Pygett is a former mayor of the city of Opelika, author of The Academic Hustle, The Ultimate Guide to Scholarships, Internships, Jobs, Offers, and a Black Historian. Matthew graduated magnum cum laude, woo -woo! from Morehouse, let's say it again for our HBCUs, with a bachelor's in African-American studies in psychology. He's conducted national award-winning research at UC Berkeley, Emory, and Morehouse on high-achieving Black men. Recently, Matthew was the former chair of a premier mentoring program for boys in South Florida, the 100 Black Men of South Florida Leadership Academy. Currently, he is the founder of the annual South Florida HBCU Picnic. We can ask him some more about that later. And the Sankofa Cipher, an African-American history, culture, and thought group. And a minority and small business manager at the Miami-Dade 
Chamber of Commerce. Can we give Matthew a round of applause as we bring him up to discuss why Kwanzaa? There we go. Good morning, Habari Ghani. Habari Ghani, Umoja, Umoja. Yes, yes. Thank you for uh, inviting me to this space. Uh, I love this setup and this stream, y'all. This is amazing that we are here online, on live, to let people know about the principles of Kwanzaa and Guzu Saba and all it is to learn about our history, our culture, and heritage. Zinga, thank you so much for setting this platform up. I love Dr. Harris uh, coming on and speaking and the African drummers and this whole experience. So thank you for inviting me for participating today. Thank you for coming. So we have some questions to engage. So let me let tell the audience a little bit more. So this is going to be some thoughtful engagement. So we are definitely not going to be just talking at you. We want you to ask questions and we're going to look at those questions as they come up and answer them. But I'm going to also ask him questions so we can explore why concept because a lot of people are on the edge and I know a lot of people are join us joining us today and they're still trying to get a sense of what Kwanzaa is, is it for them, and things like that. So question number one, when and why did you start practicing Kwanzaa? Actually, I started practicing Kwanzaa towards the end of high school. Um, I was in this program called 100 Black Men of South Florida Leadership Academy. And as a part of that program, um, I had a mentor. His name was Glendon Hall. And he used to do a Kwanzaa celebration at his home. At first, I was like, I don't really know about this uh, stuff. But um, he really pushed me, encouraged me to get engaged and, and really honor um, our history and our, our heritage. And being a part of the celebration, we had time to um, really showcase the talents of our community and culture, to take the time to really um, think about what we've done in the past to further our community. It just stuck with me. And when I um, went to college, I, I studied Black men, high achieving Black men, and Glenda Hall was one of them. And I asked them all one question, well, a few questions. And one of them was, well, how important is your culture and heritage to your success? And over 70% of them said that it was extremely important to their development. So Kwanzaa became a, a part of my life because every year we have to take the time to really understand who we are as a community and as a people. Um, usually during my birthday or end of the year, I do a personal reflection. But Kwanzaa is a time where we can actually do a community re reflection. And these check-ins that we do with ourselves, our families, um, and our community help us to refocus our lives and make sure that we're doing things to further development of our community. Because we all are just sitting and standing on the shoulders of those before us and those that take the time around us. So it's very important that um, we practice Kwanzaa. That's why I practice Kwanzaa. And now I got children, we got four kids and they're developing up in this tradition and they have a sense of self knowing um, their history, their culture and following the principles of Nkuzu Saba. That is an awesome story. Um, I started celebrating, personally, I started celebrating Kwanzaa about 20 years ago. Um, whoop, whoop, my first day was at the African American Research Library. Nice. Um, and so it's, it's so full circle that we're here culminating the 20th anniversary. Um, and I'm in a different position than I was 20 years ago when I started incorporating Kwanzaa as a personal practice. See, so, and that's, that's the importance. You see, there was a community around us that provided that, that supported the African-American African Cultural Research Library in Broward County. There's so many people that support this work, and it continues to give us a platform to develop um, as people. So I, I wouldn't be where I am today uh, without the support of the community and also principles like this. Ashe, same, same here. I'm definitely um, the sum total of everyone who's poured into me. So my next question is, why is Kwanzaa relevant? Some people feel like it's insignificant. Um, there's a lot of controversy around it. So why do you feel like Kwanzaa is relevant? Why, why is it relevant for you? And why should it be relevant for the people who are watching with us? 
So one of the things that is, is very important for us as uh, human beings and as people is to recenter ourselves and to make sure that we are greater than our own individualistic uh, perspectives. Like we usually navigate and go through this world uh, based upon our wants and our desires that can literally shift all throughout the year. And sometimes we're so into ourselves that we don't realize and understand that there's a community around us. And the more you look outside of yourself and you build into a community, the more you become a human being because we're social people. And what Kwanzaa does, it gives our community, the people of the African diaspora who had their history, their culture, their perspective, their religion is completely taken away from them and then put upon an outsider's perspective of who we are and what we do. And no matter what, just as though I have characteristics and traits from my father, my great grandfather and uncles, it's in my blood of who I am. So taking the time on a yearly basis to really understand who you are, why do you act the way you act? Why do you like to dance? Why do you like gold? Why do you uh, like to talk a certain way and hang out with friends in a certain way? Those things have historical precedence. And the more you understand that, the more you can really blossom into who you are. And that's what Kwanzaa gives us. Kwanzaa gives us that opportunity to do that. And throughout the, our, our lives, things can go left and right <laughs> so quickly um but every year when we take the time to reflect on our year reflect on the guzu saba it gives the opportunity to recenter ourselves and who we are and what we need to do so I, I like that dr harris yes those ancestral links matter of fact one of the men i studied he talked about he's i asked him uh, why his history is important to himself he said that we are a link in a chain that stretches back thousands of years and i'm determined not to be the weakest link when he said that that just shifted my life it was uh dr brian marks um he's actually the uh founder of the african-american research institute at morehouse college it, it really had me to look at myself in the mirror like will i be the weakest link and matter of fact what are those links before and how strong were they and what do i need to do to be that strong link in the chain that's going to stretch beyond me for thousands more years so yeah that, that's why kwanzaa is relevant to me great so let's let's get into the principles right um we have the Nguza saba today is emoja then we have kuji chagalia i always like to say that by the way like something how it rolls on my tongue um we have ujima ujima nia Kumba and Imani. Do you have a favorite principle? And if you do, can you expound on to why? And you don't have to just pick one. If you have a couple of principles or if you just feel like all principles are relevant, you know, I'm just let's talk, let's talk about the principles. So my my number one principle um, that I continuously live by um, each and every day that I love is Kuji Jakalia, self-determination to define ourselves, name for ourselves, create for ourselves, and speak for ourselves. That is essential to the time that we're living in at this point in time. Uh, when I was growing up, I didn't have the, I, I was a very shy person, kind of still am. Um, and I didn't really like put myself out there and, and who I was and what I wanted. And when you do that, the, the world can just sweep you away. And I got swept away and got caught up and things of that nature. But then the moment I say, you know what, I'm going to be determined to be the one to put a smile on mother's face and become a role model for my little brother, that shifted everything. That helped me to go to school, get straight A's um, to where I raised up my GPA from a 2.1 or 2.7, got me into Morehouse. And when I got to Morehouse, I wanted to study more about my history and culture. So I majored in African American studies and psychology because I wanted to find who I was. And I wanted to create for myself. So that determination pushed me to excel and develop. 
So, and it was funny that I keep going back to this research project because it just, it was had what completely changed my life. There were three factors in terms of these black men that was breaking out of the box and becoming successful. Um, and the very first was self-determination. So we have to be determined. Others were a positive support group and exposure. Um, so being determined for what we want in this world, pushing that out there, whether that be, I want to become a doctor. Um, I want to become, uh, I want to be in meditation. That determination motivates you to learn, to grow, to develop in these various areas. And um, Kuji Jackalee has been that for me. And the next one probably would be Nia, uh, purpose, because I, I love to live a purpose-driven life. So those are my two favorite uh, principles, but I practice them all um, because they're such an essential part of my life. Okay. So we, we heard what your favorites were. I'm going to keep on going with this question. What principles do you think are relevant for our community community? and what we're dealing with currently within the context of being black in America or even in the diaspora? It would be Moja, um, Unity, and Ujima, co Cooperative Economics. And the reason why I say those two we need to focus on is, number one, we gotta understand that we are people before we're able to move in any way, shape, or form. When you recognize who you are, whether you're part of a certain family, whether you're part of a certain institution, whether that be HBCU, a school, you start to identify with those people. You wanna help out the people in your family and your community and whatever you identify with. So emotion is that very first step. That's why it's a found, foundational principle in Kwanzaa. We always light the black candle first because emotion is the, found, fun, the foundation for everything else. So emotion is number one because we have to know who we are and come together as a people. When we realize that we have a common struggle, that the challenges we face in our communities, where we live at, uh, how we move in corporate America and these schools and how we may be targeted by police, those are common struggles. And we understand that we can start to come together to face those things together. It's a lot harder for one person to be brutalized by the police, killed by the police, one family, and they try and do something. But as you see with the power of social media, when so many people bring light to that and say they want to address it, things move. So in all things that we do, we have to have unity. That's a prior elected official. I couldn't get elected and change my community by myself. I had to have thousands of people vote for me volunteer to fundraise so emotion is the very first principle to really develop it and the next thing i think we need to focus on is with ujama um which is cooperative economics we live in america things cost we gotta make money um and the more we make money together the more we highlight and push professionals up businesses and support each other, the more opportunities we're going to have. The more people that can sponsor programs like this, shout out to Bank of America um, and the friends of the African American Research Library, because they have the, the capital to fund this. And not only is it funding things, but they create jobs. If you got a business or a successful op opportunity, you may be able to give my son or my daughters a job or an opportunity or an internship. So the more we develop and build and maintain our own stores and shops, we're able to create an economic foundation and base that can help us to build the community that we want, to support the initiatives and the programs and the mentoring programs. So that's why. Awesome. So quick, quick insert for those of you who are trying to practice um, Ujama cooperative, cooperative economics this Thursday, we do have a marketplace with local black vendors. Um, and we wanted to make sure we had a day where you could just purchase different things from different people in the community and learn 
who is in the community who have some services that you need. So I just wanted to make sure that you're aware. And that is in person at the African American Research Library and Cultural Center. Today's program is online because the library is closed, because it's part of a larger organization. Um, and we look forward to seeing everyone on Tuesday, December 27th, in person and online. So next question. Now, hold, on, hold on. Don't forget to ask them also to donate to this program and this yes. opportunity. Thank like, you. Make sure y'all go to the Thank website, celebratekwanza.org, and you literally uh, take some time to donate. <laughs> yes. So let me say that, too. If you like this programming um, and all the programming we have over the next seven days, um, you on that homepage for celebratekwanza.org, you can donate towards this week's program because we did a lot. I mean, it's a, it's a lot that's happening behind the scenes. Um, this is the first time that we've had a seven day program, which is a big leap for us to go from one or maybe a few days to try and make sure that you have access to programming for the next seven days. OK, thank you for that. I really appreciate you. So our next question, a lot of times we think about Kwanzaa in the sense that it's just the seven days, December 26th through January 1st, and that's it. How can we start to incorporate all seven principles over the next 365 days? And I, if you want me to go principle by principle, I can. Um, you just let me know. Uh, so principles are principles because those are things that live with us throughout our life and our day-to-day -day movement. Uh, principles are how guide us in our decisions, what we tend to spend our time on, how we want to engage. So living a principle life and basing many of those principles on the Nguzu Saba will be the very foundation for really taking this principle, it's Kwanzaa, the celebration of Kwanzaa throughout the rest of the year. Whether that be practicing Umoja, making sure that you're doing things to bring together your community. That's striving for maintaining unity in your family. Hey, you may have some cousins or some family members you may not be talking to. Bridge that gap. Bridge that gap because you want to maintain that family. Go out and get engaged, mentor in the community. Really develop who you are as a, as a person in this world and bring others together. Practice that in terms of emotion. Kuji Jakalia. Define what you how you want your year to be. Many times set in New Year's resolutions are really determining who you want to be. How about this year when you think about your New Year's resolutions, you think about it by basing it based upon the Ngunza Saba and how you plan to define your year in, in honoring the principle of Kuji Jakalia. You may want to take some time and really understand about Ujima. And that is building and maintaining our community together to make our brothers and sisters problems our problems. Mentor. It is a thing that ch completely changed my life. There are so many nonprofit organizations and celebrations that need your volunteering, that need your support, whether that be a donation or just showing up. You'll be amazed at how many times we have events and things in the local community and we do these events and people don't show up. Show up, volunteer, bring the kids, like make our brothers and sister pro problems our problems by practicing that. Ujama, you can donate right now. You see the link right now, celebratekwanza.org. You can make sure you show up to the marketplace. Every dollar that you spend within our community stays within our community for at least one more cycle. And we need to continue to circulate that because that's going to create jobs, things long time, long term. Um, Nia, purpose to make our collective vocation in the building develop in our communities in order to restore our people to their traditional greatness. Now, I love Nia because many times that's what I teach about. I teach about black history and culture before slavery because and that's literally just 500 years ago. So slavery is just 500 years ago. But we have been on this planet for thousands of years. 
we are the founders of civilization, literally. And the majority of what we know of about this world comes from our ancestors. So when we recognize that, it gives us a purpose to know that we're not just here temporarily in this life to enjoy, to have fun, go out to eat. We have a purpose. And our purpose is to create a better community for those who are coming in the future, for our children, the next generation. So you live that life of purpose with creativity, kuma. And that's literally showcasing what you can do, what we can do as a community. And then lastly, we have faith and um, Nasimani. So to believe with all our heart in our people, our parents, our teachers, our leaders, our righteous victory, our struggle, that is something that literally lays a foundation of who we are. So many of these principles we kind of actually practice already all i would say dude post up the new Uzusaba up somewhere in your house or on your phone on a computer take a look at it throughout the year and just do one thing that's going to push you much further either that day that week that month and we look forward for, to um, for you joining us uh, this week to show up and celebrate kwanzaa okay um, last question, uh, but before I say last, the, ask the last question, for those of you who are in the audience, um, if you have comments and more specifically questions that you would like to direct towards us, this is the time to start putting your questions in the comment section so that we can answer them for you um, as best we can. So we um, really look forward to engaging with you a little bit more. We're loving the comments. We're throwing them on the screen as they come up. And so we just want to make sure that um, you're preparing your questions. You have a little time to prepare your questions and put them into this chat. Okay. So next question, last question. What do you see as the future of Kwanzaa? Ooh, that's a tough one. <laughs> um, what do I see as the future of Kwanzaa? I think you are the future of Kwanzaa. This program is the future of Kwanzaa. Those that are in this, um, in the chat that are happy that we're doing this Kwanzaa celebration, um, that are coming in, we are the future of Kwanzaa. Um, the African American Research Library is the future of Kwanzaa. So we will make it however we want to make it. As long as we continue to share this with our children and develop, Kwanzaa will exist. Traditions, holidays, and celebrations are only as powerful as the people that celebrate and honor it. So as long as we continue to do that, I think the future of Kwanzaa is very strong. Um, it's strong in my family and in my community. And we hope that it continues to grow so it can give blessings to those of us that are going to come before and continue to honor those that came, uh, those of us coming after and those who are um, continue to honor those who came before us. Thank you. Thank you. OK, so as the questions are filtering through, I want to make sure that people know where to find you. So can you let us know where people can find you? Um, www.matthewpigot.com. Also, all social media, uh, Matthew Pigot, at Matthew Pigot, Facebook, um, Instagram. We'll be launching the uh, YouTube and a few other things this coming year. I'm really big into really teaching our history and our culture. I train a lot of teachers, especially in uh, Broward Public Schools, on Black history and culture. I'm teaching that. And also, I help students to um, help to realize the knowledge of self and learn how to grow and develop into their professional development through scholarships, career development, a few others. So um, if you're interested in academic hustle, um, you can check out the book, um, but visit www.matthewpigot.com and then we'll go from there. Awesome. Okay, we have a question coming in. How do you invite someone to celebrate Kwanzaa when they assume that is a religious and or against their religion? 
That is a tough one. I've had I've had family members in the same way. <laughs> uh, that's my brother right there too. <laughs> so, um, one of the things that I would just encourage is to showcase um, by being that change you wish to see, um, by putting on Kwanzaa events, by celebrating, by just showing them one day, one principle, um, getting them to just come and join and, and be a part of the experience. Um, that's the most, the, the first step because they have to see it for themselves, recognize that it is not something that is anti against any religion or culture. Um, I don't see any religion or culture that tell you not to attend uh, festivities. Uh, we always practice, those of us um, who appreciate and respect other people's perspectives and religions, uh, we can attend a, a, a ceremony. We can attend different events. We can attend these things um, because um, we are there to support and to appreciate. And so I would just encourage you to ask them to come out um, and support. Tell them you want you got some food for them, got some music for them, some games. May want to bring out a spade table, uh, a few things to help them want to just get comfortable and enjoy being around each other. <laughs> exactly with the spade table. Okay, our next question was that a different question? Let me see. Um, so someone said, in addition to your response, that Kwanzaa is a tradition and not a custom, I think I saw. Very so true. Miami Gardens now asks, are there events in South Florida that focus on each of the seven principles with three, throughout the year during Black History Month? If not, are there plans to do so at Arlick? Oh, great question. Mm, that was right Arlick, for you. Go Arlick, ahead. Arlick, <laughs> set you up. <laughs> Okay, so one, I'm gonna say this. If you want to see more programming at Arlick, you gotta show up this week, right? Because when we make an ask to do a program this large, they need to see numbers, you know? And that's what I work against. Like I can make a beautiful program, but if no one shows up, then our sponsors are like, well, I feel like we didn't, we didn't meet our goals in terms of points of contact, right? Um, one of the organizations that I know that does Kwanzaa programs throughout the year is Kwanzaa 365 Live. So they're doing things throughout the year, but the research library does have programming all year long. They might not be attaching a specific principle to it, but a lot of those programs are aligned to that. If you are somebody who needs help with tech, the library has computer classes. They have business classes as well. Like that have constantly been there, but a lot of people don't know that they exist. Um, there's also shows that and productions that are happening in-house, as well as people who are producing their programs and hosting at the African American Research Library. And one of the ways that you can help to increase our funds at the African American Research Library is by checking out books. You know, the way that the library stays alive is by circulation and you don't have to and you so you can i know you might live somewhere else but you can shoot to the research library and check out your book from there using your broward county library card and that's going to help that library build up the funding to create more programs because a lot of times i know people say hey they're not doing enough we need to see more but it comes down to dollars and cents right and so sometimes we practice ujama by our presence, showing up, taking pictures, recording. Hey, do you know about the African-American Research Library and Cultural Center? By the way, for those of you who are joining us, because a lot of people are not local, the African-American Research Library and Cultural Center is one of three institutions of its kind in the nation. And I think sometimes we really sleep on how important the African American Research Library is. And, you know, Sam, the, the person whose dream was for us to have that, really was able to galvanize, galvanize the community and have them come together to put, the, so there was Umoja, there was self, I mean, like, if you look at what created what we see now 20 years later, the African American Research Library came into fruition because of the Nguza Saba. People showed up, 
people were determined, people spent, they put no donations in to get this building to be built. Um, and so in order for us to keep, because this is our 20th year, in order for us to keep this institution alive, we have to support it. You know, maybe it's even bringing some of our programs there so that, you know, there's more things going on so that people are provoked or um, they, they sparked to then go upstairs and go into special collections and see what exhibits are present. You know, because they have, there's so much more to the research library than just activities. And I want more people to also think about it in that kind of way. Any other questions? Okay. All right, I have encountered getting Haitians to see value and importance of Kwanzaa. Can you share some of the cultural nuances that one needs to be mindful of during this conversation? It's hmm. a good question. Huh. Yeah. So mm, Haiti and, and Haitians uh, come from the most powerful step in the awakening of Black consciousness and Black power. Um, in the world um, or in our modern times. With the Haitian Revolution, that was the spark that showed the world, all the oppressors, all the colonizers from the United States to Britain to France to Spain, that these people could not be held back and held down, that they were going to define themselves, Kuji Jakalia. They were going to come together, Moja. They had a purpose Nia, and they were going to showcase who they were. So the Haitian community um, is one of the pillar examples of implementing the principles of Kwanzaa um, and really awakening our determination for to define ourselves. So I would uh, position the conversation in that aspect, because even here locally, there aren't too many traditions that continue to help uh, even the Haitian community reflect upon that revolution, make sure that they understand that they are a part of a worldwide movement. That was the first country to and only to actually defeat their own oppressors and say, hey, we are black. We won't have no slavery and we plan to make sure that we can rule and develop our community. That set the spark for almost all the nations that were colonized in, um, in Africa, here in America, and everything. So to take some time using Kwanzaa to recognize that and incorporate them into the whole African diaspora, that's why I believe the conversation um, can really have a foundation that. So I'm going to add a little bit, a little bit. I'm Haitian. <laughs> ah, there we go. Um, so... I would say that I'm Haitian um, and I, what I would say is sometimes we have to change our approach. Um, we get really excited about things and we want everybody to do it. <laughs> but our approach can be off-putting. Um, and so sometimes it can be as simple as having that Kwanzaa potluck and inviting people over and then having your candles and, and opening up the conversation and doing what we're doing right now. These are the principles. What principle do you connect with, right? Why do you, how does that relate to you and your history, your personal history and your country of origin? Um, but if you're like, hey, you need to celebrate Kwanzaa, don't do this over there. Exactly. You're already creating a place of, you're being antagonistic, right? Mm -hmm. if, you, if they're celebrating other holidays, don't tell them they need to take it away, right? That's their own journey, and you need to allow people to be on their own journey. And Kwanzaa isn't necessarily supposed to be a substitute, right? It's its own thing. And some of us came into this because we, I, we found ourselves, we became very, um, we were looking at our African his, history and we did a lot of studying and we were so excited to like reintegrate with who we are at our core, core ancestr ancestrally and we throw everything away, but that's not, all, that's not everyone's journey, right? Because th then we create a void. 
Um, and some of us fill that void with Kwanzaa, but that might not be what the next person needs. But that doesn't mean that they can't be part of the experience, right? So I just think we need to, to be mindful of how we share the information and even educating ourselves more so that when they have questions, we can answer them with assurance. Like, hey, no, it's not a religion. You know, because I think sometimes we get into it and we're still trying to understand what that celebration is for ourselves, which is why we did a lot of the things that we did this year to help you understand the history of Kwanzaa, how to set up your table and all of those other things. And I, I would say, don't be so black that you can't connect with black folk. Exactly. <laughs> 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 like, seriously, man. And, and, and we all go through that phase when we first get into it because it's 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 so awakening. Like when you really start learning, you like, hold up, almost everything that I learned is just not right. <laughs> so it, it can be it can be um uh devastating, but don't don't like I said. Don't be so black you can't connect with black people. <laughs> and, and forgive yourself if you are or have been that person, right? Because I think everyone in their journey might have become that person, right? I was. <laughs> uh, I, you know, 20 years ago, my NSYNC is definitely a different NSYNC now. But I would say that, you know, self-compassion and grace is also important in this journey because there's a, there's a huge learning curve in life. Um, and so we might have information and making sure that information is digestible is really important. So like he said, don't be so black that you can't relate to black folks. Okay. Do we have any last questions? Let me see what's going on. Any last questions? Okay. No last questions. So can you tell people again where to find you and do you have any final remarks uh zinga i just want to give honor to you sister for really putting on this platform and making it what it is um for really taking the time to craft these days of kwanzaa these events um for breaking in all the sponsors from bank of america the african american research library and all those that are on here i want to thank each and every one of you that are on here today that are commenting that are sharing letting people know this is what we mean by participating and showing up we look forward to seeing you throughout the rest of the week um and just take the time to really practice the Invusal Saba. If you do that, then I know you're going to go to the website. I know you're going to check out the book, The Academic Hustle, on, on Amazon. And I know we're going to continue to grow together and develop. So let's practice Kwanzaa. Let's practice the Invusal Saba and these principles. And let's continue to shine um, and celebrate and honor. So, again, thank you, Nzinga, um, Dr. Harris, all those that are part of today's program. And we really appreciate um yeah, this whole experience. Thank you for being you, for being part of our community and for shining your light on this world. Thank you again. <laughs> Round of applause. I'm applauding for all the people who can't send the sounds at you. Um, and have a wonderful Kwanzaa celebration. We look forward to seeing you throughout the week because I know you said you were gonna show up one of these days. So we'll see. Yeah, breaking the whole family. <laughs> yes. Okay. So thank you again and have a wonderful day. All right. Take care. Take care. Okay. That was such a beautiful conversation. Um, and I thought it was important for us to have the discussion on the first day. Um, so thank you again for all of you who have been with us for this past time. Um, so let's just do a little housekeeping. I want to, I know everyone's asking about schedules, so I'm going to go over the schedules with you. So we just completed our, our, um, we just completed our first day, right? We're online because the research library is part of the library systems and they wanted to make sure that employees had a day off. Okay. So I know I, I, someone messaged me 
here and said that they were at the research library while we were going. So I want to apologize to anyone who showed up. We were only online today. However, for the next week, we have a good set of program. The only other day that we won't be online will be um, this Sunday, January 1st. So January 1st, we will only be online as well. So I'm giving you a heads up. The library is not open. So I just want to make sure everyone is clear on that information. Okay. So then tomorrow we are online and in person. So it, tomorrow morning, we have an introduction to the principal, which is Kuji Chagalia. Um, we have a meditation with myself, yoga, and a cooking demo. And so they're going to happen right back to back to back. Um, we'll be sending out emails with more details for everyone. So make sure that you're signed up for our email list. Um, in terms of in person, we are kicking off tomorrow with Soul Healing with Reiki with Simone Kelly. This is a great presentation. Um, it's going to be two hours. And some of the audience members will actually have some Reiki done with them. Okay. After that, I'm going to do a live in-person meditation with you at 2.15. And then we are with Urban Garden Works, Roger Horn, the ABCs of a gardener. This is a hands-on workshop, which is about 90 minutes. And we're going to talk about how do you start your home garden, right? Because a lot of us are interested in growing our own food, and we're not sure how to navigate that. If you want to see the full schedule, you can see it at www.celebratekwanza.org. Uh, again, Wednesday, we are also online and in person. Wednesday, we have um, a presentation online with Francis Dean, as well as another cooking demo. And in person at the African American Research Library, we are going to have a... Um, networking event where we're going to be playing Kwanzaa bingo and then we're going to do an activity um, upstairs with in special collections okay followed by Thursday so Thursday we have our online part it is Ujama so we have a online presentation with uh, my Uber Life's co-founder Jay Van Sharp starting your business 101 but in person the marketplace starts at one o'clock, okay? Then we have a presentation by Coach Rob, transitioning to plant-based diet, followed by Down to the Penny, Eliminating Debt and Achieving Your Money Goal with e Ivy Bennett. And then we have a cooking demo with Sunny. Um, and so we're really excited. She's gonna be talking about fast vegan treats. And then we have some DIY with Jacques Organic, followed by African Dance. Our big show is happening on Friday. We are having a cultural showcase. Marketplace is op opened again. If you don't get to make it on Thursday, it'll be open again at seven o'clock, but then our cultural showcase starts at 7.30 till 10 p.m. We were able to get the library to open up late at night so that we can have this cultural showcase. So no matter if, you, if you're working in the daytime, you definitely can make it. And online that day, we have how do we, how do we heal through purpose with your tune day shorters. Kuumba is full of activities. I'm just gonna let you guys go to the website to see all of them. Registration is really critical for the quilt making workshop with Kianga and the instrument making with Eddie Osborne because those have limited seats. And last but not least, we'll be closing out back online with emotional healing through art and culture with Keisha Bowers. So we have a lot of stuff going on. Um, I want to thank everyone again for coming to our first day celebration. I'm so excited that you're here. If you want to just get pinged, if you want to be pinged for all of our online sessions, 
subscribe now. That's how you're going to get YouTube to automatically send you something so you don't have to like search emails. Um, and I'm just so grateful for all the support. And again, I want to thank our sponsors. This program was brought to you by the African American Research Library and Cultural Center. It is sponsored by the Friends of the African American Research Library, who needs your donation so we continue to do this programming. Uh, and it was also sponsored by Bank of America. And so I just want to thank everyone for showing up. Uh, we have so much more to go. And thank you for trusting me to create and curate this program for you today and for the rest of the week. Um, I'm excited to share some of these amazing presenters with you, as well as amazing vendors. Until next time, everybody. Umoja, 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 umoja.